Welcome to Skin Depth Convo. I'm Anna Kagaragis. This is a show focused on educating and inspiring all those in the skincare and beauty industry. But it is also a show for those looking to improve themselves from the inside out. Or maybe you're looking to further your beauty education with a little entertainment and a great conversation along the way. And it's sure to be exciting because we are closing the door on 2022 and getting ready for the year ahead by looking at this year's biggest stories and crazes and looking ahead at trends for 2023. And joining all of us are all four Lyra Clinical owners, Metaxi Delicus, Francine Kagarakis, Brenda Cumming, and Anna Constantine. Ladies, I'm so excited we're all here today. But let's first, actually, I didn't tell you this before, but I kind of want to look at this last year. Uh, what are some of the biggest moments that happened to you in 2022? What will you remember most from this last year? I can't believe it went by this fast. How's that? It yeah, flew definitely. by and it did. the fact that we are able to move around without masks again felt really good. And getting out again, seeing people again, it's very nice to come back to some type of normalcy. Reconnect. Yeah, I think for me is actually the Singapore. Oh, yeah. Weekly. And Australia. Yeah. But the Singapore for me was neat because we're all together. We learned a lot. We connected with a lot of different countries. It was a beautiful experience. Australia has always been a fantastic opportunity to talk and meet with all our accounts there. But for me, Singapore gave us so it many is, opportunities for 2023. We have a lot of beautiful contacts, beautiful people out there. And what's nice about this is we realize how global skincare is. And our message made a lot of sense in that part of the world. So we were very, very excited about that. And again, Australia, absolutely love them. They've been with us constantly and wonderful, wonderful accounts out that way. And thank you. I think for me, it's moving forward, being able to create new things and develop new things and um, being able to see what's out there and what's going to come in the pipeline for 2023 being able to go to Singapore and see what's new and what to look forward to. I want to ask you one more question about Singapore. So what did you learn on that trip? That basically, market about is that very market? similar to our market. We are all connected. Everybody's skin needs the same thing. They are looking for repairing. They're looking for refinement. They're looking for brightening. Everything that we talk about is not just the U.S. It's not just Europe. It's also Asia. I am very excited to see that we're not separate. We're really all the same. Well, it sounded like an amazing trip. All right. Next up, we have some news in the industry. Lots of big stories to talk about. But first, how about a word from Lyra Clinical? Lyra Clinical takes today's skincare to the next level. Using cutting edge technology and the best high quality ingredients, Lyra gives you brighter, healthier, younger looking skin. With award-winning products, advanced education, and innovative skincare philosophies, Lyra Clinical is redefining aesthetics and offering superior products and treatments that produce remarkable results. It's beauty from the inside out. Be bright, be beautiful, Lyra Clinical. There's been some interesting stories this last year. One of the most popular topics has actually been celebrity skincare and also some of the backlash of some of the names entering this competitive market. Some consumers, indie brands, and industry media highlighted the perceived cash-in by celebrities with a thin to non-existent tie to beauty. Critics question if they're squeezing other brands out of an increasingly competitive industry. And on top of that, we've actually seen a lot of indie brands struggle this past year. Many closed their doors in the wake of the pandemic, supply chain issues, and inflation. But what's fascinating is that we're seeing a lot more famous men joined the party. So back in September, Brad Pitt actually launched his Le Domain line, a luxury skincare brand for all genders that features grapes and olive oil derived from Provence, France. But the backlash from the news was that the product had sky high pricing and that it was backed by an actor who had zero experience in the field. You also had names like Jared Leto, Travis Barker, and Michael Strahan who launched their own products. So what are your initial thoughts when you think of celebrities getting into the skincare mix? So I have to say I'm mixed. If they're passionate and it's something that they've always had a passion and loved, I think they'll be successful. Fun fact, something I, I read about, that they said about Brad Pitt is that he never used skincare products. However, when he was dating Gwyneth Paltrow, she introduced them to skincare products. And that was something that he is grateful and thanks her for. But I think that maybe um, got him excited to be able to create his own line. Somebody like Rihanna, same thing. 
I think if they're excited and they're involved with it and understand the products and the um, ingredients, the benefits of it, I think it's a positive. Um, I also think somebody like Gwen Stefani, not in the skincare, but in the makeup industry, you'll see videos of her applying the makeup. You'll see videos of her explaining it and her passion. And I feel like those are the people that should continue to do it. But if you're doing it for something else and just to, to kind of benefit from it, then those are the ones I disagree. I want to jump in and say, is it about their name or is it about their product? If I'm buying a name, then it's going to be okay if that's what I'm looking for. But if I'm looking for results, it takes a lot of work, a lot of passion and a lot of understanding. It doesn't come that easy. Being real, understanding the real true meaning of skincare and ingredients, it's not that easy. So for me, looking at the industry, it's going clinical. You really have to follow a line that will give you what you want. And if it's a name brand of a celebrity, that's your choice. But for us, Lyra is always focusing on giving the results and the brand will talk more than any name in the industry. Nice thing about the United States is that it's free enterprise. Everybody's got a right to create a business in the cosmetic industry. Aesthetic industry is not going anywhere. It's And I think people are catching on to that. If you're famous enough and you attach your name to a private label brand, you'll probably do well for a while, but are you going to back it up? Are you going to stay behind it? Are you really going to delve in and learn about ingredients and what products do and be a true representative, you know, of that line or. No. And I agree with you. I think their celebrity name is going to get people to try the product. I think people at least try it because they like the celebrity, but will they get the results that they want? Like Metaxia said, clinical. Do they know how to follow? Do they know what products to change to? Do they know what products to pair together? Do they have that backup to make sure they get the results that they want? So I do think the celebrity name gets them there, but will they maintain it? It's basically, it's built-in marketing. Oh, and unlimited funds. Yeah, unlimited funds. Unlimited funds. funds. Let's talk about us when we started. (laughs) We didn't have... We didn't have unlimited funds and we lived it 24 seven. We still do. But you know, what's really cool about us? It was really to prove a point that there was a good product. It wasn't putting our name first. So I think starting with what we did, the humble starting of a company, our products had to be the the stars, not the star itself, the personality. So our products have always started, you know, with our business being the stars. We still do that. We, we hate, we hate being on camera. We don't want our pictures. No, we, we, we promote our products and the combination of the ingredients. Yeah. That we we've don't, come but up with today's skincare, I think a lot of countries around the world, and we're learning this, especially in Asia, it is not just marketing they're going for. Now they're going for KOLs or influencers that are using the product and are able to discuss the product. So this is where they are looking for that education because the consumer is so much more savvy today and they do understand what ingredients do and they do understand correction of the skin. So marketing is one thing, but now they are expecting results. The other thing I found interesting in this story was that you have many men entering and the interesting part about that is by 2029, it's predicted that the global market for men's skincare will reach 28.3 billion. So you could say that these celebrities are getting into the movement early this way. Uh, but what are your thoughts on the whole male skincare line? I know Brad Pitt's was a genderless skincare line, but are skincare lines genderless anyway? Well, we've been in this industry for what, 30 something years now? There's always somebody trying to do a skincare line for men. I don't think men, you know, as Brad Pitt admitted, he never even washed his face, Mm -hmm. you know, for a long time. But now he's, you know, capitalizing on it. I think unless you are a celebrity or you're another well-known company that comes out with a niche product for men, it may work. Otherwise, I think being unisex, you know, we We do using our products. One of our products, the Pro Firming Serum. When it first came out, we actually had it in one of our beautiful jars that we have the lift cream and the caviar cream in. And men loved this product, but there was some feedback that men did not like the jar. So we actually placed that in an airless container because the men preferred it in that particular container. So we are unisex and we do hear them and they do use our products. You can, t- you can thank Zoom for <laughs> right. men wanting to work on their skin. Point. in the pandemic staring at a in, a in a computer for eight hours a day yeah makes yeah. sense for me having three sons 
and realizing that we have evolved where they use skincare where they didn't years ago, understanding that there is a shift because you see it in your own family when your family starts to use your products. We hit the mark again. It's by being unisex, Lyra Clinical has given many opportunities to all genders. And I think that's really important from the beginning. So I've seen the evolution with my own kids, my own sons. Oh yeah, it's out there. We're Lyra Clinical, open for everyone. That's who it is. All right, another big story that actually came up this year, this was CNN that reported it. There was a woman in Minnesota who had experienced partial vision loss and a host of other worrying symptoms linked to the use of skin lightening creams containing mercury. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency found high levels of mercury in the women's home, including in the laundry room, towels, bedding, and children's bedrooms. Officials noted that the likely culprit was found in beauty creams, specifically those that were marketed for skin lightening. They were obtained out of the country. The product's labels did not disclose the high levels of the toxic chemical found in the formula. And now mercury, when it's added to topical creams and lotions, is meant to lighten the skin as it works to inhibit uh, the formation of melanin. But the FDA has limited the amount of mercury to less than one ppm of mercury in skin lightening products, while other countries have banned the use of mercury in skin lightening products altogether. Now, skin lightening practices that contain mercury are risky and can be harmful for a variety of reasons. These products can not only irritate the skin, but also if absorbed by the skin can cause issues related to the kidneys and the nervous system. So there's definitely some rules you have to be really careful of when it comes to this. But Metaxia, you know, what are your thoughts on when you hear this story and this woman who lost uh, partial vision because of her product? I have a personal story. I know someone that's pretty involved in labs that all of a sudden told me she smuggled mercury over the border and was using it because she wanted to get rid of her pigment. And I told her that wasn't a smart idea. And then her skin actually brightened, but it came back even worse. It is toxic. It is something that is not long, has a long-term benefit. Another experience, we used to use glass thermometers with mercury. And when we would break it for whatever reason, the mercury would fall on the ground. I remember saying, be really careful. Don't touch the mercury because it is toxic. I mean, we've come a long way. And I think chemicals are not the answer. I think using products that will be benefit for your pigment long-term is where it's at. It's not a quick fix. It's an ongoing type of thing that you have to control. And I don't, and I have to tell you, I don't like mercury or any kind of chemical will, will can cause long-term problems. And pigmentation is one of the key things about Lyra. 97% of our products do have brightening agents, but again, they're not toxic. We're very careful not even to have hydroquinone in our products because we are very, very careful to understand managing melanin in a very, not holistic way, but a clean way where we're able to get the effects that we need without the toxicity in the skin. And as Metaxia is talking about, when her skin got darker, that's the rebound effect because the skin was actually attacked and melanin jumps in to protect the skin. So when you're putting something toxic, the rebound effect can make the pigment even darker. So it's very important to know that we don't want mercury in skincare. We don't use mercury in skincare, and the U.S. does not use mercury in the skincare. We were very, very careful about that because it is very, very toxic. In fact, most people took out the mercury that we all had in our teeth when we were young because we used to have mercury in our fillings, and people associated that with headaches and other things too. So it is very important to know what goes in your skincare, and it's very important to know your ingredients before you use it. There's no quick fix, and if it's too good to be true, it is, right? Get what you pay for do some research. I would also say to you, just to add to you guys, is that when you're getting products, especially from other countries or even here, just make sure that you know that the labels, if they have labels, all our products are tested, um, micro tested, yep. uh, stability testing. It manages and controls certain percentages that can go into a product. So that's really important. Know what's going into the product that you're using, know that it is a tested and qualified and approved by a product. You don't want to use an over-the-counter product where they might have higher percentages that you're not aware of. Very true. And now remember one dermatologist said that the biggest thing you have to do is thoroughly research the items, consult a board certified dermatologist, purchase products from authorized dealers, especially when it comes to skin lightening products. It's also best to avoid products that are imported from other countries. If you are not sure of the formulation, if they are not labeled 
or if they are being sold illegally in the United States, which I believe was one of the big issues with this woman's skincare, unfortunately. But you guys are always a wealth of information, lots of great stories, and we're definitely going to have more news stories to come. But it's time now to look back on this past year's trends. So let's look into what 2022 brought. What were some of the big trends? Fran, oh, talk yes. about some of the every trends November, from 2022. Every fall, October, November, we look into the trends for next year. But we also go back and see what we have done the year before. And we're very happy to say we always have been on the right trends. For 2022, there's a few trends such as anti-inflammatory skin care. Especially with COVID in the last few years, everybody's more cautious of inflammation. We want to make sure you're, you're healthy, your skin's healthy. So making sure that you do skin care that deals with inflammation is always very important. Anti-inflammatory skin care. We started with that, but that was one of the big trends for 2022. Yeah, and that was a big keyword, right? The microbiome was another big part of that as well. I mean, that was a hot button word that we heard this year and we talked about it. Yeah, we did, and that's actually a trend for 2023. But one of the other things, skin minimalism. Am I saying that correctly? Skinimalism, there we Skinimalism. go. Skinimalism. Skinimalism, that means people don't want to apply five or six different products. Today's consumer is looking for something a little more multifunctional, and we are able to deliver that. We actually began that way, and this is today's consumer. That's right. From the beginning. We've always, that was always our philosophy. I mean, I use my BB. I use, basically, I stopped using as much makeup. I pretty much just wear BB all the time. I'll mm -hmm. even sometimes even contour my skin with the different tones of BB. Well, you're not trying to hide anything, Anna. Your skin yeah. looks beautiful. Oh, Isn't That's the goal. I think it's really important that even cleansing and cleansing with a toner our cleansers are so cool that you just cleanse and your balance is there simplifying your home care is really important and people don't want to spend money on duplicating a process so for us a cleanse without a toner just on that first step is really beneficial for lira and for the patient or client using it i think people want simplicity i think they want quick results and they want to know that they the can next have a one, one two three is step at and home be done. treatments more and more people are looking for at home treatments because they're looking online for more information. Actually, we started doing this in about 2018 and more and more people are looking for treatments that are a little more than just home care. So at home treatments became very popular in 2022 and continue to be popular moving forward. Skin health is another one. People do understand next. that beautiful skin is healthy skin. They don't have to wear a lot more makeup, that the skin actually can be repaired through professional products, through the correct products, understanding how to use products. So skin health is another popular one. Another one we have, science-driven skincare. People do understand this. They're going online and they're looking up all those fancy ingredients. They do understand that if they use a little sample, that sample is just about the scent and the texture. Knowing what is in that particular product and knowing what it does, you need to use it at least two or three days. The science behind skincare is very, very popular at this point. Can I add that it's science and technology too, combination? The technology part of skincare is it's taken off. It's not the same deliveries. It's not the same textures. We don't have to have that heavy weighted product to give you that penetration. Technology is taking us to the next step further. We're dealing with a live epidermis, more or less not a dead epidermis. We've learned a lot of the functions of the epidermis. So together with science, technology has given us the opportunity to maintain not just the health of the skin, but the wellness of the skin, which is a new word that I'm listening to a lot more. Skin wellness and is also something that we address one, result with Result driven and ingredient focused. And that really does key into what Metaxia said, result driven. So once they see results and once they understand what they're using and they understand the ingredient, then they want to use that product. So that is another trend of 2022. Can I go back to ingredients? In fact, ingredient focus. We take a lot of pride here in Lyra to do ingredients from all over the world. We are now looking and going to conferences to see what new ingredients are out there in the market. We're finding that territories do matter when you pick an ingredient because ingredients, for example, like the wine and the Sonoma Napa wines are different than some other wineries 
that produce wine. So we're learning that ingredients that come from different territories do benefit also on results. Like the red orange we're trying to find out, or the green herb or the masica. It's the source, the sourcing, and where it comes from does matter. So our ingredients are, again, very important to our right. formulations. And that which brings goes into back sustainability. to science-driven skincare, which how you deliver that ingredient into the skin. So this becomes important again, because that ingredient is so very, very important, and the research behind it, now making sure it is delivered into the skin is another thing that professional skincare is able to deliver. So delivery systems are very, very important. And another one, sustainability. That is huge. People are very cautious of the earth right now, and we want to make sure that we're using ingredients that not a lot of waste. So sustainability is very important. Our plant stem cells fall right into that. So sustainability becomes very important in skincare. And then one last one for 2022, which we're excited to talk about, is broader protection. We all hear about UVA, UVB damage, but there's a new one out there that we've been talking about for a few years, and there's been a lot of highlight in it in 2022. HEV, high energy visible light, and that's the blue light from all of our electronics that we're using right now. So there's more and more ingredients that professional skincare offers to actually deal with HEV. And we're very proud to say the fact that there's an ingredient that we actually started with, and it's called BVOSC. And I think Brenda can give me that inky name a little better. What is that name, Brenda? <laughs> Tetra. And that's huge because that acid. is a super antioxidant and for the skin, and it is a lipid soluble vitamin C. So it is a phenomenal ingredient to help deal with HEV high energy visible light and so this absolutely well, they keep making it and better so too, again don't they, when you have a vitamin c that's able to penetrate that lipid barrier on the skin and go in and deal with the skin a lot more that's huge so it looks like lira has it all together when it comes to trends in 2022 so let's look forward to 2023 let's forecast the future here and some trends to keep an eye on for 2023 what should we look forward to i see that one of the biggest ones coming out is waterless cosmetics so waterless water-free or and hydrogenous beauty refers to cosmetic products formulated without water instead using various kinds of butter oils waxes and oil soluble active ingredients what do you know about waterless Very cosmetics? excited to say we have been using a and hydrous product at this time and anna just reminded us the other day because we have been in research and development for our 2023 new and hydra sunscreens coming out for 2023 and then anna reminded me that our oil free is also anhydrous we just didn't make a big deal out of it and so we have been doing that sunscreen for a few years so we've been ahead of the game but we also have done some research and development on two new ones coming out and the reason why anhydrous is so very, very important is because it's much more concentrated product. And this is very important because water is in there, but now it's much more concentrated, smaller bottles. We don't have to ship big, big bottles anymore, much smaller bottles. Concentrated skin care is the trend of the future. Isn't it a filler too? Especially Sometimes I was water just gonna becomes ask a filler. That. Yeah, I think it's a filler. And I think you look at products, the ingredient decks can be very expensive, but you put a little bit more of the water in it. But I could tell you being smarter and less is better, not more. You know, we used to put a lot of skincare products on our faces because more was better. So less is best. And I think Lyra follows that trend that you don't use a large amount of whatever Lyra product you're using. Less is best. And it performs. Do you need more preservatives when you have more Probably water? Probably do because in, preservatives are very, products? very important in products because biggest fear we have is bacteria and causing any damage. But we have to remember one of the big things we do with Lyra Spa, when we have gone to many spas to you know talk about our products, they are very used to these huge bottles because they deal with the body. And there's a lot of water, as Metaxia said, as fillers. Our products are very concentrated. You don't need that much because there's not that much water in the products. The products can do what they need to do. It's the ingredient, not the water that you need at that point. So concentrated product is what we have always been into. But now when they're taking the water out, so it's even more concentrated than before. Technology. Yes, it it's all technology. Well, this next one's not new to Lyra Clinical. CBD skincare. CBD and skincare is not going away, but an increase in consumer understanding and how it works when you need it. So what direction Rhonda, do you see you're CBD in Colorado, skincare heading? And you were mentioning how CBD doing in Colorado before I go into something. 
Well, let me first say that, you know, we battled on putting a CBD product. The taxi and I were dead set against it. You and Anna were all for it. Of course you win like you always do. Yeah. And it's a great product. I mean, I have to say, but then once marijuana was legalized in Colorado, everybody and their mother was making it, producing it, selling it. Nobody really understood it. But on the news about two weeks ago here, they were talking about how the industry here in Colorado is down by $300 million. And a lot of these stores are closing and people who got in early, made their money, got out. And I don't think it's going anywhere. I think the fat it was a little fattish at first and I do but first of all down. i want to thank so you, you anna you and i are the only ones who are able to <laughs> see ahead see the light <laughs> thank you this uh, is she true. was right there oh, yes the two of us profits we were we were right i you agree with wrong. you, you um, cbds wrong. are phenomenal and we're dealing with the endocannabinoid system and it's completely different and the way you look how ingredients work make a difference cbd in everything does not work and this is the thing I think you're talking about, Brenda, because they were putting, and they still are, putting CBDs in everything. You have to understand when you're using CBD, if you're using it in skincare, how you're using it. And so this is what we had to learn. And you don't need CBD in your coffee. You don't need CBD in other things. How you use it makes the difference. But Brenda and I were right about one thing. And the right is that we didn't want a CBD line. We yeah, were focused right. on, and Brenda, remember the argument? Oh, yes. It would yes. be like everyone else having everything with CBD in it. We followed you because it was really a specific ingredient. Because she's persuasive. Yes, yeah, she is. But, you know, <laughs> we hit the middle of the road. We didn't go all right. CBD, Actually, and we did not Anna eliminate and I finally CBD. convinced them. And this wasn't easy. Just so everybody know this, this was not easy because no. this is not marijuana for your face. And I think we have to tell them that. But we saw it in a different light. But being clinical and to be able to offer isolate CBD with no THC, and I think that's how we had to address this, but understanding how CBD works, it does need something to trigger it. And we're very excited to say our Mastija had the right terpenes to actually push the isolate CBD to work a little better in the endocannabinoid system. So it's the power entourage. The Mastija terpenes together with the isolate CBD are able to give us what we need in the skin and make the difference. So I think this is where our CBD product works beautifully. Unfortunately, we cannot sell it all over the world because there's a few countries that still have issues with CBD but the fact that we're selling so well here in the U.S. and in Europe is because they do understand how CBDs work on the skin and the isolate makes a difference and passing it through regulatories. I think you said something that's really important is that we didn't want it in every part of our line and understanding why you're using it and the benefits of it. And that's the biggest thing is there is a huge benefit of CBD and understanding that and understanding why you're using it, I think is the key. And that's why it's so successful. So a lot going on. I know it's not a novelty item anymore. The novelty items are out, but finding really science-driven products when it comes to CBD is important. But let's move on now. As we discussed earlier, a big hot word for 2022 is microbiome and microbiome skincare. Google searches for the term microbiome have increased since 2016 from 2020. The searches have increased 600 to 700% more in the past decade. This year, we expect to see more microbiome cosmetics, especially prebiotics, postbiotics, probiotics. How would you break that down for consumers to understand? Well, we've been talking about that for years, right, Fran? Yes, we've been talking. Thank you, Brenda. We've been doing prebiotics for a long time. They're in our fatty acids, our beta gluten, oligosaccharides. We've been dealing with that. We just didn't label them prebiotics. And a lot of companies will take that and use that one word and make it a bigger word. We've been using probiotics and we've been perfecting it. We understand probiotics, either fermented or cultured probiotics. We have both. Understanding it makes a huge difference. The new one they like to throw out there, as you said, Anna, postbiotics. What does that mean exactly? It creates a balance and manages the micro microbes on good bacteria, which means it's a probiotic and a prebiotic together. And we already have it. But by labeling it, it makes the product look a little more exciting. It's a marketing tool. And we do have them. They do make a difference. But that's part of the training that we actually go over. I think, Anna, having a podcast with a chemist 
that came in and did her thesis oh, on Kelly microbiome. Yes. yes, and having her speak with us, we always are looking for the best type of information we could share and going to the source. Cause you know, we're just trying to share the knowledge that we're putting together. So everybody knows it's not what just we say, it's what the chemists, the scientists, you know, this is what makes Lyra different. We're a team putting things together to give you the best information because we're all learning and we're all sharing. And I think for us, microbiome was something we were doing and trying to balance the epidermis, but now it has a name to it and it has more science that could reference it. Lyra has always been on that mark and continues to be on that mark. The microbiome is all about understanding the balance of the microbes on the skin and professional skincare is able to deliver that through probiotics. Nice. That's hyper-personalized skincare, right? And you're analyzing everything with the microbiome. Now let's move on though to fermented beauty products. So certain fermented ingredients preserve formulas and replace chemical-based preserving agents while being organic. Fermented ingredients make plant-based actives split better and be more readily accessible to hair and skin. So how is it that fermented beauty products are beneficial to skincare? Bonnie, we also have one of those, don't we? <laughs> we do. We actually, one of our we do. favorite is the pumpkin peel which is fermented, mm -hmm. which is very nice. And when something is fermented, the ingredient actually changes and it has more benefits than before. Just like when you drink kombucha, you know, it's good for your digestive system. The same thing is for the skin. So when it's fermented, it changes its substance and it also gives you added benefits. And the fact that we have olive leaf, we have fermented olive leaf, we have fermented radish root and fermented pumpkin, gives us different benefits in our skincare. What about our new peel? We're not it sure. is, acidic acid. What would you consider vinegar? Actually, acidic you're right, acid. it's fermented yeah. vinegar, the pure peel, you're absolutely right. No, yep. I did forget about that one because it's so new. Metaxia would love to talk about that one. She should because she researched it for a long, long time. <laughs> It just proves the point that you don't rush things. It takes time to do the research and then the actual formulation of an ingredient. But the fermentation of an ingredient changes also the activity level and the results. So it's really cool that we have the options. Run. And that vinegar turning into acidic acid and all that, that's pretty cool. It works. And what's funny is that trends that they're bringing up right now for 2023, we've been doing for a long time, but probiotics and fermentation go together. Because the probiotics in skincare are fermented, either rice or other ingredients, and then they turn into probiotics. And the cool thing about this technology has changed, and not only are we using fermented probiotics, but we also have something new called cultured probiotics, where it's a one step up from fermented probiotics. Yeah. So in the trends, they sort of separated them, but probiotics and fermentation are actually under the same category. All right. So now we understand so much about the products and what's coming out. Here's something though. We have the physical products, but now we're going into the non-physical world, makeup and skincare in the metaverse. So AR and VR beauty, we've seen makeup lines starting to get into this different companies. So how do you see skincare getting into the metaverse? For me, I, I think it's going to be something that stays. It's going to start and get better and better, but What's fascinating about it is that it's going to be something that can just look at your skin and determine what you need and determine your skin type, what products to use. And I think they're doing that in makeup and they're going to eventually go to skincare. But I think the the complication that they might have is not everybody's skin is the same. So I think that might be something that might be a challenge is because that's where you need your professionals because people do have different skin types people have different complications and there's different needs. And I feel like that's something that it will not be able to do maybe years and years it might, but it's a process that I think they've been starting and it's coming out more in makeup when you can go ahead and scan your face and it will tell you what foundation to use. It will tell you the type that it recommends just based on your skin tones and scanning your face. So I think it's a starting process. Um, but I still think you need your professional. And it's a generational thing. I think you two Annas would probably get on a scanner faster than the rest of us. Because for me, I, I guess I'm not prepared for AI and skincare and makeup. 
But I think for the later generation, they understand it a little more and maybe trust it a little more. I don't think it's a new concept. I think it's just getting more sophisticated. Remember at the makeup counters like Clinique and you had the slide bar? Yes. And you could customize your own, pick your own foundation. What was it? One, two, three. I can't remember, but. Well, now it's way more sophisticated because you can take a picture. You can get a new hairstyle on the computer if you want. Right. And I think the problem is, is that it's new. And what Anna said earlier is that it's going to take some time because when you program something, it's programmed to a to a general condition or color. But aesthetics is not just a general color or general condition. It has other factors. So until it gets more sophisticated down the line where they could read a little bit more than what's programmed as of today, it's going to take some time because everyone is different. Touch and feel, situations, timing. There's numerous things that can change the skin and what the skin needs. And I think that eventually it'll get better. But right now, it's really your skin will dictate what it needs, not just a program. I'm still having a problem buying clothes online. So imagine skincare. (laughs) Quick fix and a high return policy, I'm going to guess. Look, I'll be honest. It, It seems very confusing, but just like the internet. I don't know how the internet works. I just know I use it for basically everything right now. (laughs) The fact that I could have a Zoom conversation with you guys and talk to you in different places in the world, it just goes to show you that you can make it work even if you don't understand exactly how it works. But I think the people who get in on it early could potentially, it could benefit in the long run. But you got to be careful too, because you see a lot of negative news right now when it comes to crypto, because just like when you had the dot-com boom and the whole crash with the dot-coms initially, but then it still, it, it didn't go away. It just changed. And I think that's what we're going to see with the metaverse. We're seeing a lot of testing the waters and trying to figure out what sticks. When our mother could use an iPhone, who came from my wall phone to, you know, to phone. today using an iPhone flip phone and all that to a huge, remember the huge phone and the party lines, there is a transition period. And I think the metaverse is going to give us opportunities down the line. Once it perfects itself, technology is continuing. And there is so much in the future that we can learn and share. This industry is fantastic. Whoever's listening, I think will benefit to what we have to say, but it's, all about skincare. It's all about health and wellness right. of our skin and keeping our youthful appearance as long as we can. All right. Before we go, finally, Pantone announced the 2023 color of the year. They are embracing pure joy with the color Viva Magenta. The Pantone Color Institute meets twice a year in a secret meeting where they decide the color choice. Now, Viva Magenta is rooted in nature descending from the red family, demonstrating a new signal of strength. The color revels in pure joy, encouraging experimentation and self-expression without restraint. It's electrifying, boundaryless, and it makes a standout statement. So what do you think about this bold color for the Pantone color of the year? And how is Lyra going to implement it? Well, I think it's great. It's time for us to be boundless. It's time for us to be powerful. And we are looking to get out again. And it's a happy color. I'm excited. And I'm sure you're going to see it in our social media. I'm sure it's going to be there. Anna, what do you think about the colors? Because you deal a lot of colors with marketing. So quick, funny story. Jacqueline is running for Miss Cambodia. And she came out, sent me a, a post of a beautiful red gown. Mm-hmm. I had asked her, I was like intrigued with that color. And I'm like, what was, why, why would you pick this color? And the first thing she said was powerful, inspiring, fire. And I feel like that is what 2023 is going to bring powerful and strength. And now we are stronger and we are ready to accomplish 2023. So just that alone, I think it's the perfect color for 2023. And I for sure, um, would love to use it. And I think you'll see it in the Lira marketing because it is strength. And I love that. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to see how you guys do it. Now to close out, Pantone also said that Viva Magenta is a transformative red tone capable of driving design to create a more positive future. And we're hoping for a very positive 2023. So thank you all for a fantastic and informative show. 
Uh, so thank you all for joining us today. I appreciate having all four of you on the show today. And remember, if you have any questions for any of us here at Lyra Clinical and a Skin Depth Convo, you can email us at skindepthconvo at lyraclinical.com. That's skindepthconvo at lyraclinical.com. And make sure to follow all of Lyra Clinical's social media channels at Lyra Clinical. If you like the show, feel free to give us a rating. Five stars, always appreciated. That'll do it for all of us today at a Skin Depth Convo. I'm Anna Kagarakis. Thank you again. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you all. Happy New Year.